Enviro refrigerant or Enviro safe, I think the can say on them. If you've seen my previous videos of a customer who uh, purchased some of this refrigerant on the internet, and uh, I believe the name and phone number of where to get it was came from um, an eBay purchase. And uh, this is interesting. Anybody and everybody who knows anything about refrigerant, no vacuum required for this refrigerant really so a customer does a repair all the lines are open the compressors open and you just leave all the air inside the system the moisture and you just pump a flammable refrigerant on top of air and you're going to compress it really i don't know of any refrigerant like this if anybody knows of any factory or, or any procedure with any refrigerant that you just leave air in the system and you pump a refrigerant on top of air no vacuum required that's that's very interesting now if you vacuum empty system release the vacuum before charging release the vacuum so you spend all the time to pull a vacuum and you release the vacuum. Now, what are you releasing? You're not releasing anything. You're opening it up and you're allowing the air to go back in the system. So then why did you vacuum in the first place? Now, I'm trying to think of why they say don't vacuum the system. is on. Oh, and another thing. So no vacuum required for this refrigerant so if you have an existing system that you didn't open up and repair and it still has r134 in it or still has r12 inside of it you don't have to remove it you don't have to vacuum you just dump this refrigerant on top of that refrigerant is that what you're saying you're very not um very decisive here no really good instructions that was that was the one topic that really caught me that you don't need to vacuum. I'm vacuuming. And I'll I'll break the uh, I'll break the vacuum, but I'll break it with this refrigerant really slowly. Uh I guess maybe they don't want it going in. It'll go in as a liquid and it'll flash and it'll freeze. And um I don't know what problem they're going to say. Because does anyone, R290 or R600 flammable refrigerants, are you going to put that into a system full of air and then compress it? Actually, I blew up one of my uh, recovery units. Somebody put a flammable refrigerant in a vehicle about 20 years ago. And I had refrigerant identifiers, but I was doing like 13 cars in a row at one shop. And I was really in a hurry. I didn't use the refrigerant identifier. And I recovered and there's this loud boom and my refrigerant um, recovery unit just like jumped and the crankshaft and rod came out the side and then I put my refrigerant identifier on it and it was said it was uh, hydrocarbons and air and when you got hydrocarbons and air and you compress it under the heat of compression you have like uh, self-igniting diesel like a diesel engine under compression or a little Cox engine and then they give you the instructions on how to do your uh, charging liquid only because I guess because they have the must have the oil inside too and they have the dye visually uh, check to see if the compressor is active yeah well it'll work I'm going to play with this stuff because the customer has it and I'm curious as all hell. And uh, this is the one that I have on the vacuum pump for all night long. Because uh, they're not changing the receiver dryer. And it's 1984 vehicle with all the original parts. Air conditioning since 1984. Alright. So I think I'm doing this tomorrow. And uh, that vacuum pump is on this car. And it's going to be on that car all night long. Let's see what happens. Enviro safe. I guess uh, I think I got to look up that news article where they blew up their building from their unsafe handling practices of their explosive refrigerant. See you guys.